Hey everyone! After a video about the best selfie video cameras, we received a lot of input from you guys telling us that we missed one phone or another. We tested a lot of phones for our comparison, so if you don't see your favorite device on our list, the culprit is probably one particular issue many phones suffer from. Bad exposure metering in backlit scenes. In other words, a lot of phones didn't make the cut due to how they handle exposure when there's light behind you. We expect selfie cameras to focus on your face, not only in terms of detail and sharpness, but also in terms of proper light. Despite that, a large number of phones leave your face too dark or too bright because they average out the overall light of the scene and don't take your face into account. It's not a deficiency of a camera, but rather the way its algorithm is programmed. For example, the XZ Premium's algorithm uses matrix metering instead of prioritizing your face. So, when you have light behind you, this is what happens. It's the reason why it, or any other Sony phone for that matter, didn't make the cut. But when a lot of you suggested that we should have included the XZ Premium, we decided to take another look to see how it compares with the phones on our best of selfie video cameras list. The Nokia 8 is the only phone with this flaw that made our list, and looking at the footage now, it beats out the XZ Premium by a hair. Also, unlike any other phone, it shoots selfie videos in 4K. The Vivo V7 Plus, on the other hand, has no such metering issues. However, it is weaker when it comes to stabilization. In low light, the Vivo is a really strong contender, but the XZ Premium produced a good, if slightly darker, image. But it could keep a higher frame rate in our 20 lux scene. However, the Vivo is the only phone to produce a discernible image in a pitch black room. The Pixel 2 does its best to expose both your face and the background. It's also faster than the Xperia when balancing out the exposure of your face when light changes. When compared to the OnePlus 5T, the XZ Premium has a much wider field of view, which is great. Once again, the Xperia surprised us with how smooth and natural its stabilization was. The Mate 10 Pro's colors have more reddish hues, which look more flattering than the XZ Premium's bluish tint. Although it deals well with backlight, the Mate 10 had a harder time adjusting to a sudden strong frontal light. The iPhone 10 looks positively orange in comparison to the bluish Xperia. This is an extreme example, by the way. We normally get more natural-looking videos out of the iPhone. Finally, this is the XZ Premium compared to the S8. The exposure metering makes a world of difference. In QHD, the S8 has much more detail, and its focus works much better too. Surprisingly, the XZ Premium beats the Galaxy phones with a more natural stabilization. In Full HD mode, the S8 gets better at stabilization, so the two are tied, and detail in the Galaxy's videos seem to pop more, perhaps due to the tighter field of view. In low light, the QHD S8 footage has more detail, but only slightly so, which means the XZ Premium is doing a great job. In Full HD, the two are comparable again, which is actually a great result by the Sony phone. The Xperia XZ Premium proved to have formidable video capabilities on its selfie snapper. The one glaring exception is its metering, which fails to adjust exposure for the most important subject in the frame, your face. If Sony could just tweak the algorithm on its phones, then we'll surely see more Xperias on future top selfie video lists. If you want to see the full details about our top 7 list, check out our previous video or our article on gsmarina.com. Links is always in the description down below. If you like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon down below. And I'll see you next time.